Hello, hello, and welcome back to Inspirations, where you can find encouragement to inspire a life. This is Dana Susan Beasley of AngelArts.biz, and I'm continuing a series on falling in love with the bridegroom. Before I get started, if you would like to get my complete falling in love with the bridegroom devotional for free, check the link in the description below. This devotional will teach you how to have quiet times and give you ample scripture to spend in devoted study to our Lord, with our Lord, and for our Lord. And also, before I get started with the devotional, let me just tell you that I am now official. I have an official Yeti mic, so I'm still getting used to it, so bear with me. All right, and now I'm going to start with prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are there for us out of the depths. No matter how low life can get sometimes, you are there to bring us out. And I thank you for this in your precious name I pray. Amen. So today I'm going to read from Psalm 130, New International Version. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can, with reverence, serve you. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord. More than the watchmen wait for the morning. More than the watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. Wow, that is such a powerful psalm. And what can we glean from this passage that the bridegroom is like? Well, this is what I wrote years ago probably about 14 years ago, I wrote, Out of the depths, I don't even have the strength to express my cry for help. There is no energy, but I know deep down I am crying out to Him for help with all I am facing. Thank God He is merciful and loving and He hears. He is my Redeemer. In fact, He offers abundant redemption. Now, at the time I wrote that, we were losing or had lost. I'm not really sure what the timeline is here for this book, but we were losing a vacation rental due to foreclosure after the Great Recession, and we were in a great deal of agony. So fast forward those 14 years, and though we have our share of challenges still, we, of course, don't have that house anymore, Our house that we live in is paid for thanks to the generosity of my parents. And my husband is an independent businessman as an architect, and I'm building up my business and helping him with his. We're trying to get our son's career up and going. So there's a lot going on, and we've come a long way since 14 years ago in all ways, especially spiritually, because what that did, it put gravitas in our soul, it put iron in our will, it put, it helped mostly with our faith muscles that we can trust God, something that I know that I lacked and something that my husband struggles with. So yes, what's the bridegroom like? He can reach us through any pit of despair and lift us out. In fact, when I had, when I was going through all this 14 years ago, I had this dream. And in this dream, I was on top of a mountain and that there was a long line of people by my side. And on my left, I was holding either God's hand or Jesus's hand. I can't remember which. And we went down that mountain and we went through so many hurdles And each time we went through a hurdle, Jesus or God would squeeze my hand and we'd go over the hurdles and it'd be fun, you know, kind of like one of those 
those uh, rides where you go slide down the mountain. And then got to the bottom, and I was by myself, and I slid into this pool, kind of like, you know, you go like a water park. And I was drowning, and I... I was looking for help, you know, reaching out for help. And Jesus reached down and he took me out of that water and he lifted me out. And I was, I was on the side of that pool, just, just joyful, such a sense of accomplishment. Okay. So if you heard that click, that was me pausing it so I could get up and let my dog in. That's the other thing. I don't know if you've noticed, but I don't have a room where I can just do my podcast in. So I am subject to the cat interrupting me, the dog interrupting me, my son, my husband. That's the way it is right now. So I do the best I can. But anyway, yes, God can get you out of any depth of despair. It reminds me of Corrie Ten Boom's book, The Hiding Place, where she says, and I'm paraphrasing this, she says something to the effect that no matter how deep the pit, God can reach down and bring us out. And of course, Corrie Tan Boehm went through the Holocaust and she was in a really deep, dark pit, a really dark place. So that does bring us encouragement, especially in these crazy times. So what is our response? How can we practically apply this to our lives? For me, crying out to him for healing. Back then and now, right now, I'm facing a great deal of insomnia, and it is really, really stopping me from doing everything I need to and everything I want to, and it's very discouraging. In fact, I appreciate your prayers, but... But so for me, 14 years after I wrote this, I would say healing from insomnia is the biggest thing that I really need. And then how can I practically apply this? Talk to him about my issues and ask for healing and for wisdom. That is, That was what I wrote 14 years ago, and I still believe that's true today. Just really, you know, whatever problem you have, just know that you can go to him and you can talk to him and he will hear you. And then what was God saying to me as I meditated on this passage? I need to commit to be faithful to take care of my temple. And that, again, is true today, 14 years ago. But we're all God's temple. And so, yes, taking care of his temple is extremely important. And that, you know, it takes thinking differently. You know, years and years ago, I used to think basically that I was trash. But I'm God's temple. Think about it. The temple, back 2,000 years ago, before it was destroyed in 70 AD, was a gorgeous, beautiful place. The temple that Solomon built, it was full of gold. Can you imagine that? The all the inner sanctuary had all this gold in it. It was a beautiful, priceless place. And here we treat our bodies, I do, sometimes like trash. And it's pretty convicting. So just think about that. Little aside. All right. So with that, I'm going to end in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I just thank you again that no matter how deep a pit we're in, You can get us out. Thank you that you're here, that we could talk to you, that we can honestly come to you with our needs, our desires. And thank you for this temple that you've given each one of us. Help us to take care of it and help us to have wisdom. And it's in your precious name I pray. Amen. Okay, so that's all for the day. Tomorrow I'll continue my series on falling in love with the bridegroom. Again, if you want the free devotional, check the link below. Would you like to go deeper into the scriptures? Find out more about my Becoming God's Bride Bible study. This is a different kind of Bible study. It's not what I call crank the blank. It's going to teach you how to study the Bible for yourself, especially to how to do a topical Bible study. It's really great, especially for mothers and daughters. 
is perfect for that and will help you grow in your relationship with Christ and with your relationships. So check that out also in the description box below. So with that, I'm going to leave you with my favorite blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. This is Dana Susan Beasley of AngelArts.biz. Together, may we reach new heights in our lives and beyond.